Today, by extremely popular demand, I'm going to be showing you the best console slash controller settings and sensitivity for Destiny 2 after the Season 15 update. This video goes in depth on how to choose an optimal sensitivity and ADS modifier because these two settings can make or break a controller player. A lot of people are wondering what settings are now the best, especially with crossplay being enabled, and even more people seem to be unclear about what these settings actually do, and that lack of understanding has led a lot of people to choose settings that are honestly not very good. If you take sensitivity for example, I can basically guarantee you don't know how sensitivity works on controller because it's not linear. So for example, this means that 20 sensitivity is certainly not twice the speed of a 10 sensitivity. By the end of this video, you'll have a good idea of what each setting really does, which settings are the best, and in the case of sensitivity, how to find that sweet spot that will be optimal for your personal playstyle and preferences. Optimizing your settings is perhaps the most efficient way to improve in Destiny because it just takes a few seconds to do and it can massively improve your in-game performance. So be sure to stick around for the whole video so you can see the most improvement possible. Alright, so first things first, let's talk about look sensitivity. The sensitivity setting is simply how fast your guardian looks around when you move the right thumbstick. A decent portion of this video is about the sensitivity setting, but I think out of all the other controller settings, your sensitivity choice will have the biggest positive or negative impact on your game, so I genuinely believe it's worth covering in detail. There are some settings where there is truly a best option and we'll be getting into some of those later in the video, but this is not the case with sensitivity. As I said in my ultimate controller guide video, there is no such thing as a golden one-size-fits-all sensitivity that is the best. If someone has ever told you, oh yeah, use this sensitivity, it's the best, they probably weren't giving you good advice, because that sensitivity might be the best for them, but in all likelihood, it won't be the best for you. You're unique and you have a different reaction speed, playstyle, personal preference, and level of hand-eye coordination, and among other factors, these have an influence on which sensitivity is best for you as an individual. There also seems to be this narrative that high sensitivity means you're a better player or something, but it really doesn't, especially if you can't properly control it. So, how do you pick a sensitivity that is right for you? I think an important first step is to understand how sensitivity works, and as I mentioned in the intro, basically nobody knows how it works on controller. For mouse and keyboard, sensitivity is really quite simple because it's linear. A 5 sensitivity is half the speed of a 10 sensitivity because 5 is half of 10. However, on controller, it's a lot more complicated. 5 sensitivity is not half the speed of 10, and please keep this in mind because it's super important to know this when you're choosing your ADS modifier that I'll talk about later. So you might be wondering, if 5 isn't half of 10, then what is, and does such a sensitivity even exist? To answer those questions, there are a couple of important things to understand, so bear with me, I promise it will all make sense in a moment. The first thing you need to know is that there's an acceleration mechanic baked into the game for controller. This means that when you move your controller's right thumbstick to the far left or to the far right and hold it there, the game will gradually accelerate your turning speed until it reaches a maximum speed where it can't go any faster. Through some testing, I found that Destiny 2's maximum turning speed can be reached by all sensitivities higher than 8. Just to reiterate that, if you're running anything between a 9 and a 20 sensitivity, the maximum speed that you can turn is the same. However, the important difference is that 20 sensitivity accelerates to reach that speed very rapidly, and 9 sensitivity takes considerably longer. This is kind of like a race car and a big truck accelerating from a stop until they reach the speed limit. The race car is like the 20 sensitivity and will accelerate to reach the speed limit very rapidly, but the heavier truck will be like the 9 sensitivity and take a bit longer to reach the speed limit. In Destiny, of course, we're only talking about fractions of a second, but that still has some massive implications when it comes to picking a sensitivity that's right for your playstyle. For example, if you're sniping on a 20 sensitivity, it will be extremely difficult to be accurate because the acceleration mechanic makes you just zoom almost instantly to the fastest speed in the game. Even if you run a 0.5 ADS modifier, which I'll get into in just a moment, you'll still be negatively affected by the rapid acceleration of the high sensitivity. On the other hand, if you're playing a mid-range sensitivity like a 10, it will accelerate much more gradually and give you a chance to actually hit your shot. To give another example, if you think about pellet shotguns, you don't really need to be super accurate, but you definitely need to turn around rapidly. So in that case, you'd actually benefit from the fact that 20 sensitivity accelerates so rapidly. I went way too far down the rabbit hole of sensitivity and actually found this is how long it takes to turn 180 degrees on various sensitivities. And you can refer to this when you're choosing what sensitivity is right for you. So for example, if you're debating between using a 20 sensitivity and a 14 sensitivity, you might ask yourself, is the potential decrease in accuracy really worth turning just a tenth of a second faster? For my playstyle, certainly not. But for you, I don't know, the answer might be yes, but you've got to decide that on your own. You might be wondering, 
where is all this information coming from? Well, the answer is, I went into private matches and spun in circles. Over and over and over again for like 3 entire days while I recorded 120 FPS footage, and then I analyzed and theory crafted for many more days after that. So please leave a like, this video took forever to make. Before you can decide which new sensitivity is actually best for your playstyle, you also need to consider the new ADS modifier setting that Bungie added in Season 15. In comparison to the actual sensitivity setting, the ADS modifier is very simple and easy to understand. It's basically just a number that changes your sensitivity while you're aiming a weapon. This number is a multiplier, so if you keep the setting on the default 1.0, your sensitivity will be unchanged because you're just multiplying by 1. On the other hand, if you put this setting on 0.5, it will make your ADS sensitivity half as fast as it was on the default 1.0. You can also put this setting above 1, but honestly I wouldn't recommend doing this under any circumstance, because you should always want your movement and turning to be faster than your aiming. I'd recommend keeping your ADS modifier somewhere between 0.5 and 1, because this will make you aim slower when you're aiming down the sights. Having an ADS modifier in this range can be extremely advantageous for controller players, and it allows us to much better combat mouse and keyboard players. This allows us to turn and move around rapidly on a high sensitivity, but when we ADS, the ADS modifier kicks in and slows down the sensitivity so that we can be accurate with our primary or sniper, for example. Remember though, the higher your sensitivity is, the faster it will accelerate to the maximum speed. And this can be bad if you want to make a super fine adjustment like correcting a shoulder shot to a headshot. So if you like to snipe, or if you value accuracy in your loadout, I'd recommend running something between a 5 and a 15 sensitivity and an ADS modifier between 0.9 and 0.5. Personally, I haven't settled on a setup yet, but it's safe to say I will fall somewhere into that range. I'll probably end up running something in the middle of that range because to me, that represents a comfortable balance between turn speed and accuracy. Even if you're a shotgun main and you want to turn as fast as possible, I'd caution against running anything over 15 because your primary shot will probably get really shaky. And also based on the graph from earlier, a 20 sensitivity will only allow you to turn about 0.1 seconds faster, so it won't really make that much of a difference to your turn speed, but it may throw off your accuracy. Another thing you've got to keep in mind is that due to the way the controller accelerates and the fact that the controller sensitivity isn't linear, the sad truth is that it's impossible to replicate a certain sensitivity by using an ADS modifier. So for example, I used to run for sensitivity for sniping. So when these changes were introduced, I was really excited to bump up my sensitivity to 8 and use a 0.5 ADS modifier. I thought this would allow me to keep the super accurate ADS aiming speed and accuracy of the 4 sensitivity, but then also gain the speedy turns and fast movement of the 8 sensitivity. I thought it would be the best of both worlds, but unfortunately it's not possible to do this on controller because of the way the acceleration works. So if you've got a friend who claims to be using an ADS modifier to gain a certain ADS sensitivity, send them this video. I've seen a ton of misconceptions about how this works, and I think it's messing up a lot of people's muscle memory. I want to take a moment to address a question that I got in the comment section about field of view and last generation consoles. Everything in this video holds true for every console and PC. Having a low field of view makes the game appear slower, but in reality it's not any different. You'll still turn at exactly the same speed regardless. However, if you're on 30 FPS, I generally encourage players to use a slightly slower sensitivity because it can be harder to be accurate if you aim super fast while only seeing 30 frames. So when it comes to finding the right sensitivity and ADS modifier for your personal playstyle, I recommend considering all of the factors mentioned in the past few minutes, and then there are also some exercises you can do. I'd recommend trying out a variety of sensitivity and ADS modifier settings in PvE first to get some practice with them before jumping into PvP. You might just do a patrol or whatever you want, but try to notice if you're consistently overshooting or undershooting your target because that can mean you need to change to a different setup. Another thing you can do is pick a point on the map or even the head of an enemy in PvE and then strafe around while trying to keep your reticle on their head at all times. If you're unable to do this with your current sensitivity due to under or over correction, that's a pretty good sign you might benefit from switching to something else. The next big setting that I'd like to address is the traction setting. In-game, it's called the Sprint Turn Scale. This setting makes your Guardian turn faster while sprinting. For example, you can see this is what it looks like sprinting and turning with this setting turned off, and this is what it looks like sprinting and turning with the setting turned on at maximum. If you turn the setting to 0.8, it will be the equivalent of running an old traction mod. If you choose to run a low sensitivity like a 4, then I definitely recommend using the traction turned to the maximum value. 
If you're on a higher sensitivity like a 15 or 20, I think this setting is no longer required, but you can still use it if you like. Even on a 12 sensitivity, I felt like this really wasn't needed. You could also compromise and put it on like 0.6 so that you can still turn a little faster than default, but not so fast that you become disoriented in the middle of a Crucible game. Like, come on, if you pair 20 sensitivity with the maximum sprint turn scale, it looks like this. Like I'm literally sprinting in place and going nowhere. This defeats the purpose. Overall though, I do think that the sprint turn scale setting is helpful for controller players because it simply allows us to turn faster during a sprint and it has basically zero downsides. The only potential drawback I can think of is not being able to be as precise when pre-aiming while sprinting, but as long as you're not using an absurdly high sensitivity, this shouldn't really be an issue. It'll feel weird for a while if you've never used it before, but in my opinion, it's worth getting used to. The next setting I'd like to cover is the separation of melee button assignments. This is super cool because if you're running Gunslinger, for example, you can bind your throwing knife to one button and your normal melee to another button, so you'll never accidentally throw your throwing knife again. In my opinion, there are a few viable buttons to assign to your charge melee. You could do R3, aka the right stick click, and this would be the same button as your finisher, so it would prioritize using your finisher before your knife. I guess that's not ideal for PvE if you run like special ammo finisher or something like that, but it really makes no difference in PvP since finishers are disabled. You could also change your finisher to clicking both sticks simultaneously, so that would free up your right stick to be a charge melee. I find that I accidentally click my right stick all the time when I'm aiming, so this button assignment doesn't actually work for me. If you have a controller with more than two paddles on the bottom, I definitely recommend binding your melee to one of those. I tried out a lot of other options including the d-pad and pressing certain buttons simultaneously, but I felt like none of them were responsive enough. Especially when you have to aim a projectile melee like a smoke or a throwing knife, you kinda need to keep your thumbs on the sticks. And even if you're clicking the stick downward, it's still hard to accurately aim while doing that. It pains me to say this, but I don't think I'll personally be using the new melee mapping option. My controller has two paddles and I use them for jumping and crouching, and I don't want to sacrifice either of those for the occasional melee ability. Unfortunately, I don't really see the new melee options being of much use for most controller players, simply because most of us don't have enough button real estate, and we've got to prioritize more important actions like jumping and sliding. If you've got a genius button mapping idea for the melee, please let me know in the comments because I'd love to hear it and I'm sure someone else will benefit from it as well. The next setting I want to mention is one that seems to confuse a lot of players due to its somewhat ambiguous description, the double press delay. I've heard a lot of people saying that this introduces input lag and you should never use this setting, but I actually use it on 5. All this setting does is increase the amount of potential time between two button presses that will still trigger the double press action, like a dodge for example. I run 5 because this way I don't feel pressured to spam my crouch button so fast when I want to dodge in a low pressure situation. Apparently I can allow up to 392 milliseconds before I press my second crouch, and I'll still dodge. This setting isn't that significant overall, but I wanted to address it simply because it's frequently misunderstood. As for button layouts, I'd recommend using Puppeteer, Jumper, the Claw Grip, or a custom controller. You can also create custom button layouts and I'd actually recommend experimenting with those and I use them myself. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on button mapping in this video because I cover that extensively alongside other controller related tips in my ultimate controller guide that's on the top right of your screen now. So if you want to learn how to become the best possible controller player and master aiming, movement, and button mapping, go check out that video now. Also, please consider subscribing.